Imagine that you want something from someone. And then you might think, how can I phrase my argument so that I'm going to get that from this person? And then you might think, well, what sort of argument would appeal to that person? And what buttons can I push? And how can I get what I want? And then you're using words in an instrumental way. You're using them as tools to obtain what you desire from other people. Now, I think if you do that completely, you're a psychopath. I, I, I mean that because a psychopath has no room for you at all. It's about him or her, and you're there to be used as an instrumental target. Now then you might think, if you're only going to interact with someone once, you might as well just take advantage of them and run off. That's what a psychopath does, by the way. And there is, there is room in the environmental niche for psychopaths, but they have to keep moving around, because otherwise people figure out who they are. So they just move around, and they can take advantage of one person, you know, maybe five times or ten times or something, and then the reputation spreads and they got to get the hell out of there. But if you're preyed upon by a psychopath, which you will be to some degree at some point in your life, the psychopath, who will be narcissistic, will presume that you're stupid and, and, and that you deserve to be taken advantage of because you're naive and stupid. So it's actually a good thing that he's doing it. And uh, he, his proof for, and I'm saying he because there are more male psychopaths, the proof that you're stupid and naive is that he can take advantage of you. And so, like, if you were wiser, you'd know his tricks. And, then it wouldn't be morally necessary for him to show you just exactly who knows what about what. And so the psychopath will use his ability to, to fool you as proof of his own grandiose, grandiose omnipotence, omniscience and narcissism. Go watch Paul Bernardo being interviewed by policemen on, on the YouTube. That's bloody, it, that's enlightening, man. Paul Bernardo, he's like the CEO of a meeting in that video, you know? He gives the cops hell, he gives the lawyers hell, he protests his innocence. He basically tells them that they're rude and untrustworthy because they don't trust him because he did a few little things 17 years ago. But he basically goes, well, you know, that's a long time ago. It's like, we're, we're past that, aren't we? I mean, I'm having a discussion with you. I'm trying to solve, help you solve some crimes, which, by the way, I committed, but we won't bring that up. <laughs> You know, and you're, 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 you're accusing me of being a liar. Like, you're not playing fair. What, what's up with you? And then when they answer, he looks at his fingernails, which is like, that's a lovely little manipulative thing, because it basically means whatever happens to be under my fingernail at the moment is much higher priority than listening to your foolish story. And you watch, you'll see people do that to you. And then you get a little insight into what they're up to. He's very good at that. And so, or he looks outside, or he, or, or he just looks at his hands, or he looks out the window, immediately dismissive in his nonverbal behavior. So anyways, the question always is, what's going on behind the scene, right? And the question is, that's the case certainly on the political landscape, business landscape, interpersonal relations. What, what are you really up to? Everyone's always wondering that, right? They're, that's why they're watching your eyes, because your eyes point at things, and they can infer what you're interested in and what you're up to by looking at what you look at. And that's why your eyes have whites, is so that we can see where you're pointing them. Because gorillas don't. And so, so what that means, roughly speaking, is that all of your ancestors whose eyes couldn't be reliably tracked were either killed or didn't mate. It's a big deal for us to see where people's eyes are pointed. And so we're always watching each other's eyes constantly. What are you up to? What are you up to? What are you looking at? What do you want? And I want to know because if I know what you want, I can predict how you're going to behave. But all the information is in the eyes surrounded by the facial display, right? Because that's also an indication of motivation and emotion.